Yo, what is going on you guys? Josh Miller here. I am super excited for this tutorial because I put out this little video the other day on my Instagram and I got a super good response from people saying how sick it looked and asking how I did it. So I did a little poll asking if people wanted to see a breakdown and everybody said yes. So here we go. All right, so in order to achieve this, I had to buy some supplies because the key to this whole thing is a hot glue gun and hot gluing a stick to the bottom of the knife. And also the hardest part of all of this is the placement of said stick. So after lots of trial and error, I finally was able to find the right spot that was in the center of the knife so that it wasn't moving back and forth as it spins. The next thing you need is a electric drill because you're going to place that stick in the drill so you can have a constant spin. Before doing that, I taped the drill to a tripod facing upwards and did my best to get it going straight up. Then I used the legs of the tripod to get it balanced and have it perfectly straight upwards. In order to have constant spin, I took a zip tie and put it around the trigger of the drill and slowly tied it until it started spinning. The one problem I had was I could not find a drill that was slower than what I wanted. So I decided to film everything in 60 frames per second. And when I slowed it down in post, then I got about the right speed that I was looking for. All right, next piece of the puzzle is the green screen. When I first did this for this company a few months ago, I did it on a black backdrop and was able to achieve the same effect, but it took me longer because I had to take it into After Effects and use the string removal tool to mask out the stick. But with this, I knew I wanted to do this flower effect. And so I was going to have to have each knife cut out individually. So I took this green paper backdrop that I bought at Walmart and I taped it to a light stand vertically. I don't recommend really using this paper backdrop because I feel like it's way more reflective than if I was using like a fabric, but I'll show you here in a second how I was able to make it work. So in order to capture as much resolution of each knife as I could, I put my camera on the tripod vertically using this nifty little L bracket plate that I bought from B&H. And since it's green screen, I was able to cut it out and flip it whichever way I wanted. I'll go over the post-production part of this here in a little bit as well. Now on to the lighting. I used two four foot RGB Quasar tubes and one Aperture 120D with a light dome on it. At first I had the Quasars punching the green screen pretty powerfully, but it was reflecting a ton of green onto the knife. And so when I went into post, I was not able to key it out properly and like get it clean because of the spill. So after a couple tests on my computer I finally got the position of the lights just right by mostly pointing them at the knife and so it gave a nice edge on both sides of the knife and really just just a little bit of spilled smoothly onto the green screen uh, so I wasn't having any green reflection on to the knife it wasn't spilling onto it as for my camera settings like I said I was filming 60 frames per second so my shutter speed was obviously 120 I wanted a smaller aperture so I could have a deeper depth of field to be able to capture more of the knife I think it was around like f5 because of this I had to crank up my ISO to about 700 and this is where it's good to know how far you can push your camera and what are the possibilities in post. I knew that 700 was a safe range since my USR is a full frame. And if it gets too noisy, I know that I can take it into DaVinci Resolve and get some nice noise reduction to clean it up. All right, so the biggest tip that I have for this is I found that if I could get the camera at the right height where the bottom of the knife was like perfectly flat, I could easily create a mask in post and just get rid of the stick and the hot glue super easily. Since I green screen everything else out around it, I can just take uh, a mask and just cut that out and it works pretty seamlessly, honestly. The first time that I did this a couple months ago, like I said, I was using the string removal tool and After Effects and it took me a ton of time because I went in and I used keyframes throughout the entire clip and had to keep adjusting because the knife wasn't uh, perfectly flat and my camera wasn't at the right height. So if you position your camera at just the right height, it's super easy to get rid of the stick and the clump of hot glue on the bottom. All right, so now that I have captured every knife, I took the footage into Adobe Premiere and first thing was to key everything out. I used the ultra key effect that's built into Premiere Pro and then you really just have to finesse with the different settings to find what's right for that shot. There's really not a silver bullet to this. Then I used the crop effect and just 
crop the image in as much as I needed and I actually used the crop effect as a mask and brought the bottom up as high as I needed to be able to crop out the hot glue at the bottom of the knife. I really didn't get it that perfect and didn't want to spend that much time on getting it absolutely perfect because I knew that these knives were going to be spinning and there's going to be lots of things going on that really nobody's going to notice uh, and pay that close attention to it and, and notice that little bit of hot glue on the bottom. After getting all that keyed out, I nested each clip so that I could have a nice clean file to work with for everything else. I did some color correction in the ultra key effect, but on the nested clip I did some more coloring to get the right contrast and saturation on each one of the knives. All right, so now for the flower effect. The first thing I did was turned on my safe margins and went into view, show guides, add guides, and created a crosshair right in the middle so I had a perfect center. Then I brought in my first knife and didn't actually do this when I was editing, so I had to go back and do it, so it's just a waste of time. So I'm saving you time in this. I found in the clip where I wanted each knife to start on the rotation and cut the clip on the front end to be right at the spot in the rotation and did that for every single clip when I brought it in so that they would all be rotating at the exact same spot at the exact same moment. Then I resized it so that it would fit in the screen and then moved the anchor point to the bottom of the knife so that I could rotate it on that axis. I added a couple of keyframes on the scale so that I could go from zero to 55%. That's what was right for the project. Then I brought in all the rest of the knives and just copied the motion from the first knife and apply it to the rest of them. And then just rotated each knife to where I wanted them to be on you know, on the screen. I also went in and did a ease in and ease out on each key frame so that it would come in smoothly and didn't come to a hard stop when uh, at the end of the movement. I don't know a ton about this kind of stuff. I'm sure there are easier ways to do this, but this is just the way that I do it. I found, I've just, I've learned to do it. So I'm sure I could take a class on it or something. And I'm sure there's a lot of other easy ways to do it. Okay, we are almost there. The last thing I did was nest that clip and then just made some keyframes on the rotation since it's a nested sequence, everything is all intact and together. And so that keyframe doesn't affect, you know, anything else except the image as a whole. All right, well, that is everything for that effect. Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. I sometimes have a hard time explaining post-production things uh, because I'm just not that good at that kind of stuff. But so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to get back to you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video was likable and subscribable and follow me on Instagram. I'd love to connect with you on there. I love seeing what other filmmakers are doing and what you're working on. So see ya.